In this presentation, we'll review how to set up the UDP broadcast feature in order to transfer data one way from one OPC system service to other remote OPC system services. And this feature is not required if you need to communicate simply over the internet or through your local area network. The built-in communications of opcsystems.net will handle that for you over TCP IP port 58723. This feature uh, that I'm about to discuss is the UDP broadcast and receive features that would be required if you wanted to transfer data on a network that does not allow incoming messages but only can transmit messages out. To set up the communication services, we'll use the configure application found under the program group opcsystems.net. First, we'll set up the broadcast feature. And that is done under configure UDP broadcast. This would be the service that has the data source that you want to transmit the information from. We'll select the local service and enable the UDP broadcast feature. We'll set up the server port number, that is configurable, and the broadcast rate that you want to do the transmission out to each of the clients. The default is a half a second, but you can adjust it as fast as 100 milliseconds. Next we'll configure each of the clients that we want to transmit to, and this we would basically specify the IP address of the receiving clients, and we would need to specify this for each client that we want to transmit to. We'll also set up the port number on that receiving client that it's going to receive from. And in a moment we'll see that that port number is the same that we'll set up in the UDP receive section. Now the service is broadcasting all of the values from each of the tags found under configure tags. For example, the ramp signal, we see that its value is currently defined to an OPC server, so whatever the current value is will be broadcast out at the rate that we specified in the broadcast rate. It is only the value parameters that will be broadcast out. The other parameters, such as time on and counts, alarm limits, and status, will not be broadcast. It is only the value parameter of each of the tags. If you want to know how to define the other data source types here under configure tags, say to OPC servers or calculations, view the data sources video to set this up. Now that we have the broadcast set up, we'll use the save button on the toolbar to save this to a configuration. This will be saved with the extension UDP broadcast. You can also perform a CSV import and export for each of the IP addresses here. This way you can use Microsoft Excel to set up each of the client IP addresses and port numbers to be used. Next we'll set up the receiving clients using the configure UDP receive. You would do this on each of the client nodes. On this demonstration I'm actually using the same service to both broadcast and receive, but you would typically use this feature on another service that's remote. We'll select the local service and enable the UDP receive feature. Next we'll specify the watchdog rate. This is the rate that if we don't receive a broadcast message within a certain amount of time, then all of the tags with the data source of UDP client will go to bad quality if they don't receive a broadcast within that time period. We'll apply those changes. Next, we'll assign the port number on which we want to receive information from. You can set up multiple port numbers if you have multiple broadcast services that will be sending information to this client, but really only one broadcast service at a time should be broadcasting information to the client. This is a way that if you take one service off and another service online and it's using a different port number, the client would already be set up to receive information from that additional port. You can configure as many ports as you would like. You can use the CSV import and export feature to also set up multiple ports easily using Microsoft Excel. Now we'll save the UDP receive configuration using the save button on the toolbar. 
this file will have the extension UDP receive. For the services to automatically load both the UDP broadcast and the UDP receive, when the service starts, select configure options. I'll select the local service and under the default configuration files I'll select to load the default UDP broadcast configuration on service start. I'll browse for that and that would be the file that I saved using the configure UDP broadcast feature. Next I'll set up on the client nodes to enable to load the default receive configuration and that has the file extension UDP receive. We then select apply changes and now when I restart my system both the UDP broadcast and UDP receive configurations will automatically load when the service starts. Please note that a service can both be a broadcast and a receiver to be a data pass through if you wanted to transmit data from one service on to other remote services through a daisy chain of network configurations. Now let's set up the client node under configure tags to actually use the data that's being broadcast. And this would be on the receiving clients. So we'll go to configure tags, select the local service on the receiving node, and we'll put in a new tag name. I'll use a tag name called A1. I'll select the A1 tag. Under the data source, I'll set the data source to UDP client tag and then I will browse the remote service for the uh, information. However, if you have only a one-way network set up, you may not be able to browse the broadcasting node as if your network is blocking any incoming traffic, what you would need to do is manually type in the tag. I'm going to use the local service to browse for an item. And there I'll select the ramp value. That is going to be the tag and value that, that I'm going to receive the value from. When I select Apply Changes, I see that my value now updates from that broadcasting tag. The tag name that you define here should never include a network node name. I can now browse the remote service if it allows it during the setup to actually browse for the remote tags. Notice that it puts in the network node name or IP address in front of that tag name. But now when I have the data source set to UDP client tag, when I click OK, you see that that network node name is taken away. So you would always specify these tag names as a local tag even though it is being broadcast from a remote service. Now that we have the value in the tag configuration, we would be able to trend this value, data log it, generate alarms based upon it, send out email notifications, or use it in other calculations in this local service. One of the features that would be common is to transfer the value to another OPC server and that is using the product feature opcroute.net. So if we wanted to take this value and transfer it to another OPC server, we'd use the target tab under this tag, enable the write to OPC item and then browse for a local OPC server and whatever value is in this value parameter will be automatically sent to the other OPC server item that we specify here. There is another video describing that opcroute.net product feature and that is under our training section. You can find that right here under the configure application under the instruction videos. Under the video that is for transferring data from local or remote OPC servers to OPC servers. Now I'll emulate a watchdog failure in that the receiving client does not receive a broadcast message within a certain amount of time. And that was found under configure UDP receive is the watchdog rate. To do this, what I'll do is I'll simply turn off the broadcast feature and I'll apply changes. And now within five seconds, we'll see that the data quality for this UDP client goes to bad quality. 
We'll turn the Enable Broadcast feature back on, and now we have the value updating again. There are new security parameters found under Configure, Security. We'll select the lo local service, and we'll see that there is the new tab for UDP Broadcast, where you can either enable the ability to obtain the UDP configurations or be able to set them or save them and then also under the options three you will scroll down and you'll see that there's the other features for being able to set or get the default UDP broadcast configuration files if you have set up security to restrict all configuration and read and write access the UDP broadcast feature will still broadcast out the values out to the remote services we do have a specific video on how to set up security for all of the parameters for the security training video. If you have other specific questions about using this product feature or other product features of opcsystems.net, please contact visit us on the web at opcsystems.com.